Hello and welcome to another episode of Scratcom Talks. I'm your host, Jafar Hasman. The victory of Azerbaijan over Armenia in the Second Karabakh War is perhaps one of the most important events of the 21st century. Today we are going to talk about how the Azerbaijani side effectively commun- communicated the facts during that time. And to discuss it with us, joining me today is uh, Leila Abdullayeva. She is the spokesperson for the Azerbaijani Foreign Ministry. Thank you very much, Leila, for joining us today on this podcast. Thank you for inviting me. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, Jafar. Thank you so much. Now, Leila, to begin with, what would be your reflection on the Second Karabakh War? How would you reflect on it? Well, the Second Karabakh War, as we call it, the 44-day-long patriotic war, is certainly a glorious uh, history of Azerbaijan. Because as a result of this war, the Azerbaijani armed forces um, liberated the uh, lands of Azerbaijan, which have been under military occupation by Armenia almost for 30 years. So we have liberated our lands, we have restored our territorial integrity, we have restored international justice and ensured international law as a result of the war. We have also uh, restored the international human rights, uh, fundamental human rights, of uh, more than one million Azerbaijanis, which have been expelled from their lands as a result of the occupation of Azerbaijani lands in early 90s. So it is indeed a very important for Azerbaijan. And um, as a result of the war, you know that we have also enforced Azerbaijan itself on its own, enforced the implementation of the United Nations Security Council resolutions and numerous other documents, decisions, and resolutions of international organizations. So it is probably uh, one of the rare cases in the world since the establishment of the United Nations when a nation implements the resolutions on its own. So um, as a result of the war, you know that trilateral statement was signed and uh, new geopolitical realities emerged in the region. New opportunities for cooperation were opened for the greater region. In a way, we have entered a post-conflict area which includes restoration, rebuilding, reintegration, as well as fragile confidence and peace-building efforts. So to answer the question shortly, 44 days war is a beginning of the new area, area of peaceful coexistence in the region, which has been missed during last 30 years. Okay, now, uh, Leila, let me also ask you here, while there was a battle taking place on the ground between the Azerbaijani and Armenian forces uh, during uh, the Second Karabakh War, there was another uh, war uh, taking place on the internet, which many were calling an information uh, war between the Armenian and and Azerbaijani side. Do you think facts were uh, communicated effectively during that time? Well, indeed, it's not a secret that information war accompanied the military operations during the 44-day-long war. As we have lost the information war early 1990s, when our lands were occupied immediately after the restoration of the independence, I think we drew lessons from that defeat. We knew that we need to be well prepared to bring the right and just position of Azerbaijan to the attention of the international community. So, in fact, we have been working very hardly during those years when our lands have been under occupation to bring our position on the conflict, uh, the facts of the occupation of Azerbaijani lands, the illegal activities that Armenia have been perpetrating on these lands, the uh, the, the solid argumentation of Azerbaijan, the legal argumentation of Azerbaijan. So, we have been indeed working hard during these years, and I can already tell you that the information war during the 44 day long patriotic war. So um, because I would certainly say that uh, probably the reason number one is that uh, the leader of the country, president of Azerbaijan, has been standing in the front line of strategy during the uh, 44 days war. He has given interviews during that period, 44 days, more than 30 media leading uh, worldwide media outlets uh, during that period. And his interviews lasted for hours. He spoke about everything about historic aspects, legal aspects, currently the situation on the front line. He answered numerous other questions coming from the world agency. So in a way, uh, the president himself was a reliable source of information during that period. So 
he parallelly informed the Azerbaijani population about the latest developments. So the message was given directly first to the Azerbaijani population in parallel to the international community. So that's why we think that we have been able effectively to communicate, uh, to implement our communication strategy during the war. And uh, on BREF, uh, we won the information war during that period. Okay, Leila, then let me ask you, what were some of the biggest challenges that you think your side faced in communicating those facts to the international community? Well, the biggest challenge was probably the um, disinformation and fake news that Armenian side widely spread uh, during that period. Um, along with the general disinformation that Armenian side circulated on the conflict, its history and legal aspects during the war, they started to spread absolutely groundless information on military operations. They fabricated videos pretending to be the last minute developments on the ground. Plus, Armenia, I remember, launched a kind of web page in the Azerbaijani language presenting absolutely false information on the killed Azerbaijani uh, servicemen. And the intention was clear. It was to influence the Azerbaijani population, a kind of to conduct a psychological warfare. But um, to be honest, the population of Armenia suffered from this disinformation. So Armenia became, in fact, the victim of its own lies. So because while hearing the news, um, official statements by uh, the way on the so-called courage of their armed forces during the wartime, they've been simply shocked to witness the hard defeat in the end of this war, in the end of the 44 days. So the myth of the strong Armenian army was crashed. And as I said, Armenia became a victim of its own lies. So um, I think uh, the main challenge for us was this uh, disinformation campaign by, Arme by, by Armenia, but we have been able to effectively prevent this disinformation by Armenia. Okay, uh, now I want to talk about your role, uh, uh, about your role, uh, Leila. Now, how did you, since you work for the Azerbaijani for Foreign Ministry, how did you counter the misinformation uh, uh, campaign and disinformation campaign uh, which you say was coming from the Armenian side. Uh, what kind of uh, message you gave to the international community at that time? Because I remember seeing you on many international media outlets as well at that time. Yes, indeed. Uh, we, have, we have done our best. As I said, we have been, in fact, in an information war during all these years when the Azerbaijani lands have been under occupation. But it was a kind of, you know, latent information warfare. But the period during the 44 days, it was absolutely a real, you know, warfare, as I said, on the ground by the uh, military operations, but in the internet by the by the other means as an information warfare. How we were effective and what is probably the effective way to communicate or, sorry, to counter the disinformation? I think the only way, the most effective way is to communicate the truth. Uh, there is no other way how you can, you know, counter such uh, false information or disinformation, fake news coming from the other side. This is the most effective, the most important way. Able leadership had a strong uh, leader. We had a strong leader, as I said, standing in front of the strategic communication of the country. We had another important factor. We had solidarity among the whole society, among the people of Azerbaijan. These are very important factors that need to be taken while speaking on the effective countering of disinformation by Azerbaijan during that period. Well, um, as the Minister of Foreign Affairs, so together with the other relative states, we have been working in coordination. We have uh, we try to be really operational on time by giving the uh, information, press releases and statements on the situation on the front line informing the international community. It was, first of all, the task of the Minister of Foreign Affairs. So we did our best. We had a very good coordination, as I said, with the relevant uh, agencies. Uh, we had uh, probably uh, the best leader uh, standing on the top of this communication campaign and speaking directly to the leading international outlets. And we had a um, uh, unified uh, people of Azerbaijan standing behind. And here I would also like, it's not only the people of Azerbaijan, we had many people, and I should mention here the um, people of Turkey, brotherly Turkey, standing next to us in this information campaign, informing about the realities and truth on the ground, All right. for which we are very, very thankful. All right, some great points there, Leila. Now, uh, as we move towards the end of this discussion, now, it's been uh, more than one year since Azerbaijan's victory over yes. 
almost three decades of Armenian occupation in uh, the region of uh, Karabakh. We spoke about uh, disinformation. We spoke about how Azerbaijan effectively communicated the facts during that time. Now, what would be your message today to the international community? Because certainly it is our responsibility as individuals, right, as international community yep. to look for facts out there, not just believe everything uh, or, uh, for example, not just believe in all sorts of disinformation that we see on the media, right? So what would be your message to the international community today, given the recent example of Azerbaijan's victory in uh, the Second Karabakh War? Thank you for this great question to which I would try to answer. What I would start saying that uh, it's a fact that new geopolitical realities in our region, in the South Caucasus, uh, has emerged as a result of the last year's 44-day war. And these realities need to be taken into account by all. So first time in the 30 years after the clash of the Soviet Union and appearance of the new democratic states in the post-Soviet area, the opportunity to build bridges of cooperation and good neighborhood based on the respect to international law. So we think that we need, first of all, the countries of the region. We need to use these unique opportunities. And Armenia has to make a choice in the end of the day between regional cooperation and illegal and baseless territorial claims against its neighbors. And here we come to the role of international community. We think international community should also play a positive role and urge Armenia to realize that peace has no alternative. Any acts directly or indirectly supporting revanchism or military must be stopped. At the current critical juncture, joint efforts by international community are indeed needed to help consolidate security and stability. And the best thing the international community can do now is to avoid reinvigorating false expectations and instead focus all its efforts towards contributing to the full implementation of trilateral statements and practical engagement with Armenia and Azerbaijan for building confidence and stability in the South Caucasus region. And we, as Azerbaijan, our consistent efforts to contribute and to strengthen regional peace and development. And, and we think that international uh, community including, first of all, international media should play its important role to bring at last the long-awaited peace, confidence, integrity, also the, you know, development uh, to our region. All right. Uh, Leila, before I let you go, you mentioned international media there. So when you say international media should play its role, do you mean to say that inter international media should finally is start communicating the real facts that were largely ignored by it over the past three decades. Exactly. Uh, this is also a, a, an issue that we have been facing during all these years when some of the leading media outlets have been taking the position of one side, blatantly ignoring the position of the other side, and to start at last taking the positions of both sides and uh, to spread the news based on the realities on the ground and looking ahead in the pr peaceful and prosperous future of the South Caucasus region. All right, uh, Leila Abdullayeva, thank you very much uh, for taking out the time for this important podcast. As always, I really appreciate your analysis. I thank you. I,